What's up YouTube? It's David here with Jones Company Customs and today we're going to talk about homing switches. Um, I've had a commenter on one of my assembly videos uh, request a video on how I set up homing switches. Said he was having a little bit of trouble so I'm going to answer that request for him and maybe help some of you other Millwright Mega V owners in the future during your machine setup and kind of show you how I set up my homing switches. Now full disclosure my homing switches are not fully operational uh, I've been kind of a slacker and uh, I haven't replaced these wires if you can see here um, I've still got the original wires that came with the uh, the machine here and I really uh, need to switch those wires out for this uh, 18-2 shielded wire these those are just pretty much uh, like 18 or 20 gauge just bare wire pretty much I mean it's it's jacketed but there's no shield or anything and they're not long enough if you remember from my other video uh, the homing switches definitely do not even make it out of the drag chain let alone into the control box so um, the first thing that you're going to need if you're going to uh, install your homing switches is you're going to need more wire and I will put a link in the description to the kind of wire that you need um, pretty much like anything 18 gauge, uh, you could even use like 16 gauge, 20 gauge, 22 gauge, pretty much whatever size wire you want, you know, that's relatively small. Um, this is a low voltage current that's going to be traveling, so it's fine, but I recommend shielded wire. Uh, definitely use shielded wire, it will prevent interference, uh, there's, a little, there's a little shield in there, and that, uh, that's definitely going to be better. But uh, the, main, the main reason is because the wire that came with it is not long enough, so you can buy this stuff by the foot at like Lowe's or Home Depot. I think it's like it's less than a dollar a foot most most of the time, just like maybe 60, 75 cents, whatever. I'll uh, I'll post a link to like either Lowe's or Home Depot in the description so you guys can can see exactly what I'm talking about and and go pick some of that up. Um, so basically, how the homing switches work is you have one back there for the Y axis, you have one right here for the X axis and then you have one over here for the z-axis that's this little guy right here and um, so what they do is they basically the machine runs through a, a process or a protocol where it just it runs until it hits these little switches and you, and you see here if you listen you'll hear them click hope you guys can hear that but they click so uh, the machine like it will run over here on the x-axis until it hits that button and then it'll pull off and it'll do the same there and it'll, it'll do the same here on the z-axis and that just gives the machine an idea of where exactly it's at where where it can go where its limitations are and it's really handy stuff um, so homing switches are definitely nice now um, as far as the the x and and z or x and y axis homing switches they're pretty simple and they both go in pretty identically um, you know, you've just got this basically a T nut that slides in this T slot in the extrusion. You got this spacer here, you got this bracket here, and all that goes in through one assembly into the T nut, and it all holds itself right together. Um, when you're assembling, you know, you just kind of want to make sure that this is relatively uh, squared. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to break out a T square or a speed square or anything like that. Make sure it's perfect. Just get it relatively close. And um, you're probably going to want to, I have not done this yet because I haven't even fooled with my homing switches at all to be honest with you, um, but you're probably going to want to run your, your, um, your Z plate and all this, you're, you're going to want to run your machine all the way over and find out where you can get the maximum amount of travel. Okay, so you don't want to be hitting this, this switch here on your X axis and you still have like, you know, a whole inch or two of gear track left so you may have to make some adjustments here you know find out where the maximum travel of your x-axis is where it's hitting that and basically you you should probably want to set everything up to where you have maximum amount of travel and you're not losing any any uh, gear track here because you're prematurely hitting that x-axis now um, the y-axis should probably be the same like I said I haven't actually done these m myself I haven't homed at all so, you know, if you, like this one, I've got it pretty much maxed out all the way to the back of the extrusion. That may be exactly where it needs to go. It may need to come up, uh, you know, a quarter an inch, a half an inch, or a full inch, you know, whatever. You're going to have to uh, 
basically run your machine all the way back to its limits and you're going to find that sweet spot right where you want that limit switch to engage because as soon as your machine hits that limit switch it's going to stop so you don't you, you don't want to waste any of this uh, gear track that you have here you don't want even a half inch left over i wouldn't think i want to maximize i want to use every inch of that workspace that i have so um i have my y switch back here um so if I automatic if I tell the machine to go home to go to the home position, it's automatically going to go all the way back here to this corner. And I might leave it that way. I might change it. I know a lot of people are moving their Y switch up here to the front corner of the machine. You know, when they want the machine to go home, they want it to come all the way up here to the front. And that's fine. You can do whatever you want. It's it's all personal preference. Um, I can see the benefits of having it, you know, way back there at the back of the Y axis because, you know, then you have everything out of your way up here. If you need, to, if you're working with like bigger work pieces or something, you know, you're going to, you're going to want that gantry all the way back out of the way. Um, so the interesting one, the one that's different is the Z axis. And basically, uh, the Z axis is, is the same switch. But it, it come it came with a little 3D printed tab right here, and that slides onto this thing right here, and it's got a little screw that sets it. And also you've got you've got your screw right here that goes through this bracket, and that's what engages this tab right here to hit that limit switch, because you can't have a screw that goes all the way back here to hit that switch itself, because then you wouldn't have clearance to make it past that. Your, your gantry rail right here so that's why that's there it's very important that you have that or you're basically going to be losing like 75 percent of your z travel because that screw is going to is going to collide with your gantry rail right here now i'm going to set the camera down so you guys can get a good angle at how i have this um this z homing switch set up and this is i think very important okay i'm going to go ahead and and show you guys right here Right now, my 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 Z homing switch is engaged. That's why it's not clicking when I push it up because it's already clicked. I already have my Z jogged up to the point where that switch is engaged. So, right here at the where that switch is engaging, you can see right here. I've only got maybe a millimeter of clearance between this um, this coupler right here that couples the the stepper motor to the the Z lead screw. I've only got about a millimeter of clearance right there. And if you can see right here on my router and this uh, motor bracket plate here, I've only got about a millimeter of clearance there. I've got this thing dialed in and set right where it needs to. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my Z real quick and then move it back up a couple times and just let you guys see how that's engaging. Uh, you pretty much want to get, the, you, this screw has a little bit of adjustment. You see this is slotted right here. So you can adjust this screw up and down. Basically you want to get this close and then just use, push this screw up to where it's just barely engaging this so raise your Z all the way up to where it's pretty much maxed out and, you, and you've got just a tiny bit of clearance there between your, your coupler on your lead screw and your router and your motor bracket right here so get that clearance as tight as you can and then set this screw up to where it's just just engaging that bracket right there so let me show you how this is working Okay, so you see I've lowered it about a quarter of an inch here, and uh, that get it, it took that long for this, this tab to disengage, but that's okay, because it doesn't really matter where it disengages, it really only matters where it engages, because when it engages this tab right here, that's, that's when it sends the signal that, hey, the machine is home. So I'm going to go ahead and jog this Z up, Z up real quick, so you guys can see where it engages. Yeah, I hope you heard that click. So it didn't it didn't click until I, I jogged it up that second step. And you can see my clearance is really close right there. That's pretty much ex as far as I can go with my Z anyways. So um, that's exactly where I want it. Now, as far as the homing switch uh, wires and where they plug in, uh, they, they just plug right in here in the back of your control box. And uh, there is a diagram available on, but you have to find it. You have to find like the right point in the video where that diagram is. I do have a screenshot of that, 
and I will upload that in the description as well so that you guys can come back and reference that if you need to. Uh, for other things, I know uh, if you have a fourth axis or a laser, you need to know where the right port is on that control box. And it's also a good thing to have. So, you know, download it and save it. I'm going to throw it up in the description and just download that image and save it. And um, it's, it's definitely come in handy. You need to know where which ports go to what. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the homing switches, guys. That's about all I can think of to tell you guys about them. So, uh, I hope this video helped those of you that needed the help with it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. So, please hit that, hit that like button if you found this video helpful. Um, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel and help it grow. Um, I'm really trying to bring you guys some uh, helpful, quality, and insightful content. And I really hope it's entertaining. I hope you guys like watching this channel. So, um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll catch you next time.